Hi, I'm Dr. Christian Northrup, an OBGYN physician and authority on everything that can go right with your body, and I'm here to tell you how to use this knowledge to transform your health and truly flourish. So let me get right to the bottom of this. Do you pee when you laugh or cough? If so, you're not alone. Urinary incontinence is just one of the symptoms of pelvic floor dysfunction, or PFD. Other types include fecal or bowel incontinence, chronic pain, pelvic organ prolapse when the bladder or uterus bulge into the, va the vaginal opening. Pelvic floor dysfunction is more common than most women and men realize. Roughly one in four women has pelvic floor disorders. More women suffer from mild symptoms and probably don't report it to a healthcare practitioner. And the number one reason why a woman has to be put into a nursing home when she gets older is from urinary incontinence. The good news is that there are a lot of ways to keep your pelvic floor muscles healthy and avoid or reverse pelvic floor dysfunction. So let's start with why your pelvic floor muscles are important. The pelvic floor is a whole group of muscles, ligaments, and tissue that forms a sling of sorts to support your pelvic organs, to stabilize your pelvic joints, and in women, the pelvic floor supports the uterus, the vagina, the bladder, the urethra, the large bowel, and the rectum. And when your pelvic floor muscles are strong and flexible, you're able to control your bladder and bowels so that they function optimally. And you also have much better sexual function and stronger orgasms. When these muscles weaken, you can end up with pelvic floor dysfunction due to habits such as sitting too much, not moving your hips through their full range of motion, and then you get muscle tension due to chronic stress and overdeveloping of the abdominal and pelvic floor muscles like tight, Many women ages 40 to 59 experience pelvic floor dysfunction at some point, and men can also experience the same thing. What are the causes and triggers? Well, pelvic floor dysfunction usually does not occur due to one-time events such as childbirth. However, childbirth can cause your pelvic floor muscles to weaken, and so it can also be caused from repeated heavy lifting, using the wrong muscles, hip or back injuries, lack of exercise, wearing high heels for years, poor posture, shortening of the hamstring muscles, tucking your tailbone under you like many of you have been taught. And this is common and absolutely the wrong thing to do. In short, whenever the muscles, tendons, ligaments, or nerves of the pelvic floor are affected, you're at risk for pelvic floor dysfunction. Other risk factors include menopause. Now, I don't like to call that a risk factor. It's just that it's more common after menopause. And also, it's associated with weakening of the pelvic floor, but that's not the cause. Um, dropping estrogen levels during perimenopause can trigger pelvic floor dysfunction, but again, low estrogen is not the cause in those who have good muscle function and proper pelvic alignment. Some women get it from episiotomy, that's a cut made between the vagina and rectum during childbirth. Happily, that is falling out of favor, which I worked with for years to try to get that ancient procedure to go away. Uh, cesarean section, hysterectomy, obesity. The standard American diet is actually a risk factor. Straining during bowel movements, which again is related often to the wrong pelvic positioning. Now the good news is there are many ways you can strengthen your pelvic floor and pelvic girdle muscles to avoid dysfunction and restore continence and overall health to the pelvic area. So what to do, first of all, if you have symptoms, here are my top 10 recommendations for strengthening your pelvic floor to keep it that way or if you have symptoms. Stop sucking in your gut. That does not create core strength. It can actually increase downward pressure on the pelvic floor. This creates a kind of strain on the connective tissue in your abdomen by displacing the organs within your abdomen. Many people hold in their bellies without knowing this. If you do this, try to consciously relax your belly while sitting, lying down, or in cat-cow position on your hands and knees. Take deep, relaxing breaths. Pretend you are a dog or cat with your tail out, not tucked under you. Do this several times a day. Now, what you want to do, there's a thing here called a J-spine. This should be out. Your behind should go behind, not this. Women are taught, you know, tuck in their tail. No, no, no. Behind goes behind. And there's a great deal of variation in how far out the buttocks will go, the J-spine down here, L5-S1. 
there's a lot there's some people who have a very pronounced curve others less that all depends on your genetics and so on but in general don't tuck your pelvis like this now i want you to learn how to develop your core muscles that what are those those are the muscles between your pubic bone and your lower rib cage by doing the following i want you to take in a deep breath keep your shoulders down pull your abdomen toward the back of your spine okay now notice how this feels like engaging a corset hold for the count of 10 keeping all those corset muscles pulled in okay so let's just do this for the count of 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 okay so that's one rep try to do this 10 to 20 times per day what you might do is put stickies around on your mirror, at your desk, wherever. Just say, core exercise. And then remember, it's abdomen to the back of the spine, shoulders down, and relax. It's not this, you know. It's just this. And, and you'll notice that you stand much taller. And then this creates kind of a corset that keeps everything pulled in. And then if you are uh, doing jumping jacks or something, and these abdominals are pulled in like this corset, you're much less apt to have problems with pushing down on the bladder. So remember, this is not the same as sucking in your gut unconsciously. This is consciously developing your core strength. Esther Gauclay of the Gauclay Method teaches that as part of ideal posture, we should sit with the towel folded lengthwise under our sits bones or ischial tuberosities. This automatically will tilt your pelvic bowl forward. So I want you to think of your pelvic bowl literally as a bowl. And you want to be pouring the water out the front. Now notice what this does. It puts the pubic bone underneath you where it's holding in your pelvic contents. When you sit, make sure your tailbone is out behind you. In general, it's good to wear loose-fitting clothing because wearing tight clothing has the same effect as sucking in your gut, and regularly wearing tight jeans or Spanx may interfere with peristalsis, contraction of your gut, cause constipation, gas, and bloating, or cause reduced circulation to your lower body, and it makes it difficult to breathe properly. Do you remember the clothing and the corsets from the past where women literally had to be pulled in? They couldn't breathe. Breathe from your diaphragm. Your inner core is made up of your pelvic floor, your transverse abdominis, and your diaphragm. When everything is working optimally, your diaphragm here and pelvic floor here move in synchrony. When you suck in your gut, slouch over your computer, or experience chronic tension, the pattern gets disrupted. So to practice diaphragmatic burnt breathing, the right breathing, Lie down on your back, put a pillow under your knees, keep your spine neutral. Place one hand just above the belly button, breathe in slowly through your nose, and allow your inhale to expand your belly. Feel your upper belly rise under your hand. Keep your upper chest, shoulders, and neck muscles relaxed as you inhale, and then release your breath without forcing it out. Feel your chest and your belly drop. And if you do this for one to two minutes and work up to five minutes several times a day, lying down in that way, you'll eventually get these two areas to work together. Now also, try squatting. That is better than kegels for most women. Biomechanical, biomechanical specialist Katie Bowman points out that the gluteal muscles are the ones that are most important for pelvic floor function. Humans used to squat to eliminate urine and feces, and some still do in many parts of the world. There are squat toilets. Many cultures use the squat as a sitting position instead of using chairs. And when you do that, you have a direct line of elimination for going to the bathroom. So do regular squats. We don't live in one of those squatting cultures, and we tend to lose our good squat by the age of four or five when we're sitting in chairs. I look at my granddaughters and they have these fabulous squats that I am absolutely jealous of because I can't do it anymore. But remember, a good squat elongates your pelvic floor muscles and makes them much more functional. It helps reposition your pelvis by balancing out the anterior pull of the sacrum. When you have a flat butt and no curve in the small of your back, that's a sign that your pelvic floor is starting to weaken. So to do a deep squat, 
you start with a towel or yoga mat rolled up under your heels because some of you will not be able to do this without having something under your heels because your um, hamstring muscle is too short from wearing heels or whatever. Then you lower yourself slowly until your tailbone is as close to the floor as possible with your heels still flat on the floor or your towel and practice deep squatting at home, at the gym, or the yoga studio. Practice deep squats while playing with small children. Remember, notice how easily and naturally they do this. Encourage them to keep it up. During gardening, using the toilet. Now I use what's called a squatty potty or something to lift your feet. If you do that, you will automatically be in a much better position for elimination and you will be amazed at how well it works. In addition to strengthening your pelvic floor, you may notice fewer problems with gut function. You even might avoid or reverse hemorrhoids. Many Westerners, like I said, can't do deep squats, um, which other cultures can do. So don't worry about it. Just squat as low as you can while keeping your knees in alignment with your toes. The knees, when you squat, should not go beyond your toes. So don't go any further than you can go with the knees over the toes. So that might be very, very small. I can't do anywhere near the kind of squat my four-year-old granddaughter can do. Now, exercise. There are a number of exercises you can do at home or at the gym to help strengthen your pelvic floor. Some of the best include bridge pose and yoga, wall squats, jumping jacks, dead bunch crunch, dead bunch is where, dead bug crunch. You lie down on the floor, put your arms and legs over you, act like a dead bug and kind of scrunch together. Anyway, instructions for how to do these exercises would come from a knowledgeable trainer. Search online for video instructions. I also recommend that you Google Katie Bowman. She has many, many good resources for pelvic floor exercises. Practice yoga or Pilates. My Pilates teacher has had countless clients over the years who've healed urinary incontinence in a few months after starting classical Pilates. Many pelvic floor therapists use Pilates reformers as part of their practices. Both Pilates and yoga can help strengthen your core, which helps improve your pelvic floor strength. Pilates targets the deep core, helps you develop both strength and flexibility. Try a Pilates mat class or seek out an instructor who's well-versed in classical Pilates using equipment. In yoga class, you can practice your root lock or what they call the mula bandha, which will help your pelvic floor. The other thing you can do is use vaginal weights. Weightlifting strengthens your muscles. You gain the same effect when you use vaginal weights. So here's what you do. You can get cone-shaped weights or crystal eggs, and uh, you can use those. There are many available online, yoni eggs, and you simply contract your pelvic floor muscle to keep the weight in place, which means you're not even conscious of it. You can find vaginal weights such as yoni eggs or lilo balls online. I find this approach is superior to standard Kegel exercises because a Kegels, you know, when you're doing all those hundreds of Kegels every day, it just makes the pubococcygeus muscle tight. So you, it doesn't do much of anything with the whole rest of the pelvic floor. Also try biofeedback. It can really help you learn how to strengthen or relax your pelvic floor muscles. Using special sensors that track your pelvic floor function, this kind of process helps you learn how to activate the correct muscles to keep your pelvic floor toned. This is typically done in an office setting by a nurse or a trained therapist. The sessions last about an hour. You sit in a comfortable chair with your clothes on. Sensors are placed on your abdomen and in your anal canal. When you contract and release the muscles, the sensors measure the electrical activity of your pelvic floor muscles, especially the ones that control bladder and bowel function. There are also home biofeedback devices you can purchase, but you should still have a pelvic floor assessment. And I would recommend a women's health physical therapist. They are trained to diagnose and treat pelvic floor issues. They often perform manual therapy as well gently massaging, stretching, and releasing spasms and trigger points in the deep tissue of your vaginal canal. This alone can sometimes be enough to resolve symptoms of pelvic floor discomfort, including urinary incontinence and pelvic pain. And some women's health physical therapists partner with OBGYNs, urologists, and other specialists 
The first session may include an internal exam to assess your pelvic floor. Then your therapist will create a program that's right for you. Women who have pelvic floor dysfunction and who have practiced Kegels with little or no results typically really benefit from seeing a women's health physical therapist. You can search the American Physical Therapy Association website for a licensed women's health physical therapist. Now, you also should know that pelvic floor dysfunction, chronic pelvic pain is very often associated with sexual abuse or with rape, and these memories get stored in the pelvic tissue. And so part of the therapy will be bringing up these memories if they're there and working through them. Now, there's a few things I'd recommend that you avoid. Pelvic organ prolapse mesh surgeries. These do more harm than good and often require refixes. Bladder slings, these often do not resolve urine leaking and can lead to self-catheterization or worse, even erode into the vagina. Hysterectomies that could have been avoided are often the result. Most are conducted for ben benign reasons. Um, Botox injections in the vaginal walls, I would avoid those. Prescriptions with severe side effects that don't even alleviate the pain or leaking. Because so many women have these problems, uh, please understand that there's not a lot that conventional medicine has come out with, but the women's health physical therapists, Katie Bowman, the work of Esther Gauclay, Pilates, all of these things work. So I'd send you there first. For more inspirational tips, visit my blog and explore drnorthrop.com, where you will find wisdom for your body, your mind, and your spirit. Visit daily to discover the connection between your thoughts, beliefs, physical health, and life circumstances. And remember, you are in the driver's seat of your health, and you can make profound changes. Music